You're watching Power Nation. You asked for it, and we delivered. Our turbocharged big block Ford puts out maximum power on a minimum budget. Here on Engine Power, the typical way we make more power is to add a bunch of go-fast goodies to an engine. You know, better pistons for more compression, set of high-flowing cylinder heads, bigger camshaft, whatever. But today, we're not doing any of that. Today, we're going to make power with a stock-style engine the good old-fashioned way and the easy way by putting boost to it. The stock engine we're going to be using is this 460 big block Ford. Now this one has been freshly refreshed because we needed a good engine to start with, but it's still using stock components. It is a stock crank that's 10 thousandths under on the main and rods, stock connecting rods with stock connecting rod bolts, and a stock style replacement hyperutectic cast piston that's 4 inch 420 bore. So it's actually 472 cubic inches. Now don't get hung up on the refresh part because this is something you guys could still do at home with a known good engine of any make or size. The only modification that we have done to the short block is opening up the top ring gap for a little bit of safety under boost. The first thing we are going to do is dyno this engine in its stock form. We have the stock cast iron cylinder heads. We even have a cast iron four barrel intake manifold, but prepare to be underwhelmed. These engines did not make a lot of power for their size back in the day, but we are going to fix it by building an easy turbo system on the dyno, and we're going to see how much power we can make safely, we think, on the stock componentry. And hopefully, we don't break it. No guarantees. We're going to try to keep the cost of parts minimal on this build, so we'll kick off our assembly with a stock style timing set. It's not an adjustable set, but since we don't know the specs on the cam or its intake center line, we're going to degree the cam and make our own cam card. Our stock replacement cam has durations at 50 thousandths lift of 193 degrees on the intake and 205 degrees on the exhaust. Load lift is 251 thousandths on the intake and 274 thousandths on the exhaust. The lobes are set on a 113.5 degree lobe separation angle, and the intake center line is set at 112 degrees. Not great for high performance, but very indicative of a late model flat tappet camshaft. After spraying Comp Cam's valve train assembly spray generously on the timing chain, we'll lay down a thin bead of silicone before installing our gasket and a stock style timing cover. Since this timing cover doesn't have any dowels to align it, we'll install this front crankshaft counterweight before tightening it down. This piece externally balances the front of the crankshaft, acts as a seal, and spaces out the damper. Now we can install the front Woodruff key in the crank snout and press on the stock replacement harmonic damper. The next thing we're gonna be doing is assembling the stock cylinder heads. And we're using these because again, we're trying to keep the cost low. And these heads weren't designed to make a bunch of power. They were designed for better emissions. So don't get too crazy with your expectations. A few specs on them, they have a two inch intake valve and a 1680 exhaust that are housed in a 100 cc combustion chamber, which isn't great for building compression, but under forced induction, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The intake port does not have impressive flow numbers, but we did flow it on our SF750 Superflow flow bench. Now it flows 217 CFM at 500 lift. Again, not impressive, but this head wasn't designed to make big power. It was designed for a very specific purpose back in the day. Under forced induction, that's gonna be okay, and we should be able to make pretty decent power with our turbocharger. The only thing we are gonna be doing is upgrading the valve springs. That's because the stock springs have less than 80 pounds of seat pressure on them, and under boost, that's gonna be even less. So that's not really gonna work in our application, and we're gonna be upgrading them with a set of comp single springs. They'll have 103 pounds on the seat and 290 pounds open. We got the matching retainers and 10 degree locks to go with them. We'll get our heads assembled, and then we can get them bolted on the engine. After placing one 60,000th shim under each spring, we'll use our Goodson pneumatic valve spring compressor to install the new springs, retainers, and locks on the stock valves. With the intention of adding boost, we're going to be using a set of Felpro Permatorx Severe Duty head gaskets with a 4500 bore and a 45,000th compressed thickness. We found ours at Summit Racing Equipment. Each of these cast iron heads weighs over 60 pounds, and they're held in place by 10 9 diameter head bolts. With engine oil on the threads, they are torqued in three stages to 140 pound-feet. Up next, what can you do when the parts just don't fit? Look for an adapter. 
For this build, we're using a Melling high volume oil pump with a stock replacement oil pump drive shaft. A new oil pump pickup is always a good idea on a fresh build. This one came with the oil pump and is matched to a stock eight and a quarter inch deep front sump oil pan. Just like every build, we'll measure the clearance between the pickup and the bottom of the oil pan. Ours is great at 5 16 of an inch. With silicone on the critical sealing surfaces, a one-piece oil pan gasket can drop on. A little more silicone in the corners is followed by the oil pan. We'll tighten the oil pan bolts down all the way to the compression stops in the gasket. In the spirit of keeping everything as stock as possible, we opted to run a mechanical water pump instead of the normal electric one we would run on the dyno. And to do that, we jumped on our phones on the AutoZone Pro mobile app and picked up a brand new one from Duralast. And when I say brand new, this is 100% brand new. They start with a precision casting that they designed and they machine it for an exact fit in its OEM application. And it also includes a new shaft, new hub, new bearings, seals, and even a new impeller. It is 100% factory tested to ensure that it meets or exceeds its OEM specifications. And that's why we chose it to run it on our project. On Ford engines, some bolts go into a water or oil passage, so sealer is used on them. To make sure we have the right length fasteners, we're using a Scott Drake water pump bolt kit. After lubing the lifter bores, we can slide in the stock replacement flat tappet lifters. It's crucial that they can spin freely in the bores and that they have camshaft assembly loop on the bottom face. Stock OEM replacement push rods are next. Pedestal style non-adjustable stamped steel rocker arms came stock on the 460. They have a 1.75 factory ratio and they are torqued to 22 pound feet. If you remember when we started this project, we said we wanted to keep it as stock as possible. And we even wanted to run a stock cast iron carbureted manifold. And we were gonna use this one that we had in house. And we were gonna do that up until we figured out it actually won't work. And here's why. It's something that we didn't realize, but when Ford switched from the carbureted to the EFI version of the 460, they actually changed the port design on the heads. And although any manifold will bolt up to either of the heads, the ports don't line up. The carbureted version has a lower port that's more oval and less round. The EFI version is moved up over half an inch. And if you try and put a carbureted manifold on an EFI head, the ports will overhang into the valley and that simply won't run. So there's two ways you can get around that. You can either build or buy a set of adapter plates to run an old school manifold on that EFI port. But we decided to go a different route, which we think is better. We picked up an original 460 EFI intake manifold. Now this definitely has some advantages. One, the ports will actually line up with the EFI ports. And two, it is made out of aluminum. It is literally over 30 pounds lighter than our cast iron piece, a little bit easier to work with. The only real difference is how the throttle body bolts to the intake manifold. This is Ford's specific design for their EFI setup, but we wanted to run a conventional 4150 style four barrel like on our cast iron unit. So we picked up an adapter from Price Motorsports Engineering and that adapts a four barrel to this flange. It's a complete kit that came with the adapter, gaskets, plugs for the injector holes and mounting bolts. It does look a little funky and it has a designation of exactly how it goes onto the manifold, so we're excited to see what happens. And in the spirit of keeping this engine as stock as possible, we even got a set of stock cast iron used manifolds for the exhaust. And now this isn't gonna make a ton of power, but it's still gonna be a lot of fun and it's gonna be exciting to see how much power it makes. We got it all off the internet machine. We'll put some green bearing adhesive on these brass injector plugs and pound them in with a used socket. The intake gaskets are held in place with weather strip adhesive. Black RTV in the corners and on the china walls will seal up the intake. The intake manifold bolts are torqued to 30 pound feet. A bead of silicone goes on the valve cover rail to seal up these valve cover adapters we got off the internet. We couldn't find stock EFI valve covers and these will allow us to run conventional old school valve covers on our 460. The manifold is topped off with the 4150 carb adapter. We got a stock replacement distributor from rockauto.com and for our application, we chose to lock it out completely. <clears throat> All right. We'll put the exhaust manifolds on in their normal orientation for now. 
but that is gonna change. Up next, the big box gets a turbo system on the cheap. And then it lays down the boost on the dyno. We modified the stock distributor plug to work with our MSD off-road box. We'll be using our dyno-proven QFT Black Diamond 750 CFM carburetor. Because the engine has a flat tappet cam, we need to break in the engine using Comp Cam's 10W30 break-in oil. It has high ZDDP content to protect the cam and lifters. We'll run the engine for 30 minutes, varying the RPM to establish a good wear pattern on all of the valve train components. After that, we'll drain the break-in oil, remove the oil filter and cut it apart, and look for any indication of premature wear. Our filter looks great. Finally, we'll refill the engine with 10W30 muscle car and street rod engine oil from Comp Cams. Well, everything looked great after break-in, so now we've made a few pulls on it, varying some timing and messing with the carburetor. We think we got it pretty close and it's gonna make some decent power for what it is. But this one is completely stock besides the adapter and the 4150 carburetor. So it's not gonna make peak power really high in the RPM range. So we're just gonna turn it from two to 4,500 and should make both peaks within that. So. Stockalicious is what this <laughs> is. Oh, it's loading right in at 2,000. It's a good carburetor is why. Yeah. Wow, that's oh, yeah. more than I thought. <laughs> oh my God. Man, is that romping, stomping, or what? I think that's more than the factory here. It is definitely more than the factory. Wow. 295 horsepower. That is 460.4 pound-feet at 2,900. Almost one per, per cube, because yeah. this is a little bigger. This thing's 60 little, Yeah, so. 472, yeah. Uh, now, this thing has a boatload of manifold vacuum. This oh, thing yeah. has, you know, 3.3 inches and 3.4 inches of manifold vacuum. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have a ton of CFM going through it. No. So we know it's not really the uh, carburetor. I mean, yeah, at 4,500, it has 454 CFM going through it. So that's just a restrictive in intake track. And right. there's not much you're going to do about that without changing there's, parts. There's one thing you can do with a restrictive there, intake track. There is one thing you could do, yeah, without you changing could, parts. You could force feed it some artificial atmosphere. Heck yeah. Well, I think, I think it's time for that. I'm just excited. Success. Heck yeah. Halfway done. <laughs> to make routing the turbo system easier, we'll swap the exhaust manifolds from side to side so they exit to the front. To support the weight of our turbocharger, we hand built this bracket from 8th inch steel. This turbo, along with all of the turbo components, came from Summit Racing Equipment, and it has a 78mm compressor wheel and a 75mm turbine wheel. The oil feed and return hoses are made with Earl's line and fittings. To route the exhaust to the turbo, we used our Forney MIG and TIG welders to make this exhaust system from aluminized and stainless steel. Boost will be controlled with two Summit Racing 50mm wastegates. Since we're going forced induction, we could have put EFI on this engine, but keeping with the theme of keeping the cost low, we wanted to convert one of our carburetors to blow through. This is pretty simple and something you can do to any 4150 carburetor. The main modifications that we made to our QFT 750 Black Diamond is removing the power valve protection check valve on the bottom of the carburetor because if boost gets underneath the throttle blades and closes it, it will close the power valve and restrict fuel flow to the engine, which could be bad. We also made sure that it had nitrofill floats in both bowls and changed out the 30cc accelerator pumps for 50s so that we have more fuel flow on transition and stronger accelerator pump arms. The biggest change that we made is increasing the jetting because we wanted to make sure we had enough fuel flow to support our power level. So after punching in all the numbers into our supercomputer, we ended up taking an educated guess, and it should be pretty safe for our power level. We had two identical 750 black diamonds, so we'll simply swap the naturally aspirated one for the blow-through conversion carb. Just for the dyno, we rigged up a simple intercooler system from pieces we found lying around. With that, our turbo system is complete. Speaking of turbochargers, here's a quick look at how they work. Turbochargers are forced induction devices that use exhaust energy to cram more airflow into an engine. Exhaust pressure from the engine drives the blades of a turbine wheel before it discharges. 
On the other side, an aluminum impeller wheel draws in and compresses fresh air. These wheels ride on a close tolerance shaft that can spin well over 100,000 RPM. Up next, there's nothing more fun than flirting with disaster in the dino cell. All right, this is finally what we've been waiting for. We have our 460 fired up, the turbo system is on and running good. We made a few preliminary pulls and the engine does not want to run above 3000 the way it was and we tracked it down to having a problem with our stock distributor. It didn't like what we were doing. So we ended up switching out to an MSD Pro billet that we had on the shelf and we made up another set of wires for it. Problem solved. So now what we're gonna do is run the engine in the same RPM range that we did, but we're gonna sneak a little bit of boost to her and see what happens. The timing is at 28 degrees just for safety purposes and uh, because of pump gas as well. Two to 4,500 yes. at 300 a second. And hopefully this time we'll have a little boost. I hear it. It's working. Boost, right there. Oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> woo! Woo! Uh -huh. <laughs> Dang. Our stock engine and, uh, okay. oh, that, hey, we're pretty close on there. 422 horsepower. 639 pound feet wow. of torque. We got it up to temp, but the more we dyno it, the more it's gonna make, because all the tubing gets hot, the turbo gets hot, and it'll make boost a little bit earlier. You just wow. wanna make another one? Uh, I, let's, I think... let's make another yeah, one. Yeah, we'll just back that one up. You're all giddy like a schoolboy. It's fun. Stock stuff's always fun. We're here now. 500 pound feet at 2,000. Load in of like this. Oh, oh, snap. Look at that, look at that heat right there. 655 oh pound gosh. feet of torque, which that's what it's going to do. 442 horsepower. Wow. How much power do you think a stock 460 will take? I don't know. I mean, the crank will probably take a good amount. We're not loading the rod bolts themselves. No. We're loading the rod by compressing it, but I feel like it could take a good amount. The big thing that would worry me is the hyperutectic piston. You know, we don't want to get this thing too spicy where oh, it starts to detonate and crack a piston or just simply have it, too much it'll, force it'll for lose, it. It'll so. lose some bad stuff. So uh, well, that's not going to prevent me from putting timing in it, though. No, that's, that's, so I, I'm just going to put a little bit of time. Yeah, let's just sneak a little, a little bit I, in I'm there. Gonna, I'm going to put two degrees in it, and we'll just, we're, we're going to go from there. All so. right. We're gonna be very conservative. Pump yeah. gas, stock componentry. This has got a bolt down rocker arm, like a 190 something at 50 cam yeah. in it. And all the stock stuff. The cool thing is that this is relatively economical. Like, you know, we only have a couple grand in the turbo system. Like yep. that, that turbo's under $500 and it performs perfectly. Yeah. Got just a skosh more boost is all. Seven and a half pounds of boost. Wow. So, anyways, that's, I mean, 448, what was that? 444.9, need your glasses for that, and 656.8. Yeah. That's at 3,400. Yeah, Those are diesel numbers well, right say, there, you know? We're, uh, we're all done at 4,500. I, I don't oh, know yeah. if we've dynoed an engine this low. Before. Not, especially not at this power level, not for sure. Level. I mean, this is like, this is geeseline. This is yeah, it, it's, it's <laughs> what was it? Diesel, 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 some kind of gas diesel. That's that's very strange. Okay, so didn't seem to pick up a ton with the timing. I don't know if we want to push it and try and put any more in it. I mean, it only picked up a little bit. No. So I know what I think we should do. Oh, I can't believe you're about to say this. Let's uh, let's put some clicks in it. Oh man. Get, get, get I your, can't believe you just said get that. Get your boost T kicking. Right. Oh, I'm like a total turbo guy. <laughs> we'll put a boost T in it. Okay, here is where we're going to be hero or zero because we've uh, added a little bit of uh, boost to it as far as click-wise. Not sure how much it will be. It's probably going to be a, a pound or two, I would think. But uh, we're very worried about a cast piston and the, the stock connecting rod and all the associated stock goodies on this thing. So uh, in the spirit of science and discovery, we're going to see what it does. Yeah, I mean, none of the parts in this engine were ever designed to make this much power. So we're really pushing the limit. Yeah. Ooh, there she goes. It, it broke 700 pound feet. <laughs> oh, 
What the hell? Oh my god. And idols at whoa! Oh my gosh. 724 pound feet. Nine and a half pounds of boost. And nine and a half pounds of boost. Oh yeah, that's worth about two and a half pounds. Wow. 494 horsepower. We're, we're, we're flirting with disaster at this point, but it, I mean, it's cool. We can do it and on the dyno, we can control it really well, but I don't know if I would turn it up this much if you were using this on the street, you know? Yeah, you know, I, I don't think so. Uh, you know, we always get the comment of, why don't you push one till it blows? Well, I don't want to push one till it blows. If, it, no, if, I mean, if uh, mechanical things happen, you know? And, yeah, but but that, no, nobody wants to, you know, blow up a perfectly good engine and right. have to clean up the mess and all that time and energy. Well, no, you, you, you don't want to junk it out. And uh, this, this, this thing's idling at like 750 RPM. I know, it's just uh, a great it's, engine. It's still, it doesn't know it has a turbo on it right now. No, I, until it gets into boost, it drives around just like it would NA. And when it gets into boost, I mean, Dude, that's mean. That's, that's going to move some stuff. That's, like this would be that is mean right all there. below 4,500 with that much torque, you know, peak torque at 3,500 and peak power, it looks like 3,700 or 3,800. It's the diesel or the the dieseline, yeah. or whatever whatever you want to call it. I could go with either. I don't know. If you had just a decent running engine, you could do this very setup on it. Very very affordable turbo. Yeah. Uh, simple system. Our, our inner cooler works good. Nice job. Oh, heck yeah. Great success. If you want to see more cool tech like this, go check out Power Nation.